Hello and welcome to the Vanilla System Guide. Now we will see together how to set up a tracked camera. We are using a tripod from CV Support. They are one of our partners for tracking solutions. It is a very precise tracker because the encoders are inside the head and calculate the pan and tilt movements, sending them to Unreal Engine through FreeD protocol. Now let's see how to perform the setup. Let's add a new camera and set it up as we did in the previous videos. Once our composition is created, let's now correctly position the camera in the virtual space. In camera position section, you can find referential offset, tracker offset, and position override. Referential offset is the distance between a known point, also called zero point in our studio, and the center of the tracker. Tracker offset, on the other hand, is the distance between the center of our tracker and the center of the camera sensor. In this case, however, while I was calibrating this lens as our reference point of my camera, I took the front of the lens and not the sensor. So the distance I will enter in the tracker offset is the distance between the center of the tracker and the center of the front of my lens. To calculate these offsets, you can simply use a tape masher, or if you want to be sure to be very precise, you can use Easy Line Up, a software by Mira XYZ that we also distribute on our website. Their software, thanks to this cube, allows you to calibrate the offsets very precisely up to three decimal places. Let's now enter the data. You can use the tab button to move from one value to another. You can see from these photos that I use the corner of the Easy Line Up cube as the reference point. Remember that in Unreal, in the transform, the position values are in centimeters, while the scale values are in meters. With some trackers like Moses, these offsets are set in the tracker settings and don't need to be set in vanilla. With others, however, where the referential offset can be set in the tracker settings, in vanilla it will be sufficient to enter the tracker offset. Perfect! Once these offsets are calculated and set, all we have to do is connect our tracker to Unreal Engine. You need to open the Live Link widget. It is a plugin that is automatically enabled after the installation of Vanilla System. Go to Window, Virtual Production, Live Link, click on Add Source and choose the tracking protocol. In this case, FreeD. Set the IP address to 0.0.0.0 .0 to take data from all network cards installed on your computer. Set the UDP port to the port on which your tracker transmits. Click on Add and you will see, thanks to this green dot, that Unreal is receiving the signal from your tracker correctly. Now, all you have to do is go to your camera in the camera tracking section and link your camera to the tracker you just configured. As you can see, our virtual camera is now perfectly aligned with the position of the real camera. Now, we need to load the lens calibration file of our lens to also have the perfect copy of the distortion and all the parameter of the real lens in the virtual lens. In this case, I have already calibrated my lens. I used Easy Profile by Mira XYZ. It's a very versatile and easy to use software for lens calibration. You can also find this available on our store and also in a bundle with Easy Lineup. So I just need to drag the calibration file into the lens file of my camera. Remember that almost always the external encoder of the lens are relative, not absolute. So every time you restart the tracker and also Unreal, you have to rotate them to the maximum and minimum position to reset the start and end points to align the encoder position between the real and virtual cameras. Well, now we just need to set the delay of our tracker and our video source so we can synchronize the two streams. Remember that to prevent delay shifts, Genlock is essential. Another advice is also to always set a frame of delay to all your inputs. You can set the delay of the input source in Camera Manager, Fill or Key, click on Synchronization and set the delay in Time Delay. In this case, at 50 frames per second, one frame of delay equals 20 milliseconds, so 0.02 seconds. Now we need to set a time delay for the tracker to align it with the camera's movement. To delay the tracker, you just need to go to Live Link Widget, select the Free D section of your tracker, scroll down to the Buffer Settings section, increase the buffer, I always recommend setting it to 30, and staring to set your delay. The video signal is slower than the tracker signal, so the tracker's delay will always be greater than the videos. Use the floor as a reference point and give slight taps to the right and left on the pan to see the misalignment between the virtual world and the real one. 
Increase the delay by 10 or 5 milliseconds at a time until your foreground and background are aligned. In this case, 30 milliseconds should be sufficient. Once your tracker is synchronized to save the changes made in Live Link, you need to go to Preset, Save as Preset, and give it a name. Well, now our preset is saved, but we need to set it as default so that it loads automatically with every restart. This is very important if we are working in a multi-machine setup. Go to Edit, Project Settings, and search Live Link. And in the default Live Link preset section, by clicking on None, we can select the preset we just saved. Now, after saving the project, our Live Link preset will be preloaded at every restart. Well, now as you have seen in the previous videos, you just need to set the output for your camera. To render the camera output, we just need to go to Global Settings and select the type of output we want to use. In this case, we are working in multi-machine, so I will select multi-machine and from VP Rules, always in the toolbar, we will set which camera we want to render on this machine. In this case, number one. And if we are in a editing moment, we can push start capture if we want to work in the editor. But if we are in the production phase, we have to go in runtime. So push the play button. We will see that our composition will be outputting with the settings we have set for the camera one in the camera manager in the composition output settings. 